David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today we're going to take a look at a pen that I feel is a bit underrated, but has a lot going for it. And that pen is the Faber-Castell Loom. Uh, what I'm going to do today is talk a little bit about the Faber-Castell company, then I'll go over the parts and the features of the pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, the Faber-Castell company is a, a German company which has been around since 1761, which is quite a long time. Something interesting, according to Faber-Castell, they are the oldest brand name in the United States. The company officially entered uh, the U.S. Registry of Companies as the fifth name in the very first ledger. And since the first four companies ahead of it are no longer in business, that that would make Faber-Castell the oldest. Uh, back then it was known as A.W. Faber. Uh, it was a family-run business for over a hundred years under that name, uh, under the leadership of several male members of the Faber family. Uh, the, one of the Mr. Fabers uh, only had a female heir, and he had stipulated in his will that if she should ever marry, then for brand consistency, she must keep the family name. Uh, this was very unusual for the times for a wife to keep her maiden name, and it actually required royal approval in order to get uh, that done. Uh, his daughter married a count with the last name Castell, and eventually the husband became head of the company and led it to great success. Uh, the company decided to hire the, the couple decided to hyphenate their their last names and eventually transferred the idea over to the company, which created Faber Castell. So enough about the company history. I just thought that was interesting. Onto the pen, uh, it comes in this rather plain white box, and that that slips out. And inside we have a box with Faber Castell written on the front, and then we have a uh, a leather little pull, and inside we have uh, a rather ordinary instruction manual in, uh, in multiple languages. Then we have a cartridge with some ink in it. And then we have something special. We have an empty cartridge that's actually open on both sides. And we'll get to what the, uh, the purpose of that is in a bit. And then we have the pen the Faber-Castell Loom. This is the metallic blue finish. Uh, the Loom also comes in uh, several different colors and uh, two different uh, band finishes as well. Uh, that uh, are cap finishes, not band finishes. Uh, we'll start by taking a look at the finial, which is actually incorporated into the clip, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, on the end, we have the Faber-Castell Dueling Knights logo. Uh, I always felt their logo was a little busy. It just has a little too much going on, and when it's small and, and in relief like that, it loses a lot of its detail. It is uh, thick and, and wide and hinged with a little flare at the end, a little flare here. Uh, I'm a real big fan of hinged clips. And you can see how they actually, how the finial moves with the clip since this is all one piece. Uh, it, it feels very solid and the clip is very easy to slip into both um, uh, like a shirt pocket as well as like a thicker jeans pocket. It works very well. The, the cap has a, a matte black plastic finish that, that feels very solid. Uh, on it, it has the name Faber-Castell since 1761 with the Dueling Knights logo again. Uh, the, the, there's a thin metal ring and then there's a step down to the barrel which is metal with a nice matte chrome plating. Uh, the, perfect, uh, the, the barrel is perfectly straight and at the end of the barrel it's indented right there. Uh, and, and I like this. Whenever I use this pen, I, I have find myself rubbing the indentation a lot with my thumb. It just feels kind of cool. Uh, the cap snaps off and it does take some effort to unsnap the cap and to cap this pen. Uh, over time, the mechanism might loosen up a bit, but to start, it's going to require a, a bit more muscle than most snap caps. Uh, the section is a matte black finish as well and it has five raised rings on it to help with your grip. Uh, since this is a snap cap, there are no threads on here at all, but uh, I've heard some people complain that they, they feel that this section is a little slippery, and I'm really not a fan of slippery sections, sections but I don't find that this, uh, this section is slippery at all. It just tapers down slightly, but the rings really help with the, uh, uh, with the grip. 
The Loom has a, a stainless steel nib that is remarkable. I can't say enough good things about this medium nib. Uh, here's a look at it. It has the Dueling Knights logo again for the third time on the pen. The M for medium and it has a nice dotted pattern as well. Also uh, notice it has a, a lack of breather hole which uh, isn't that common at least on the pens that I own. Uh, that I do get a lot of, uh, of nib creep on this pen. Uh, it might be a result of the ink that I have in it, but it's a pen that I've just accepted will always have uh, an inky nib, as you can see here. Here's a look at the feed as well. It has a bit of an indent, and I'll call them uh, partial fins with a, a solid middle section. Uh, the nib on the loom is very smooth and provides a very distinct feedback, uh, which I enjoy very much. Uh, it's not buttery smooth. I'll, I'll call it like smooth plus. Uh, it's truly amazing. Uh, and to have a nib like this with uh, that, that writes this well on a pen that's $40 is incredible. Um, I, I mentioned it previously, but the Loom comes in several different cap colors and two different uh, barrel finishes. This is the matte finish, but they have a, a shiny metal finish they call the piano finish as well. Here it is on the, uh, the Faber-Castell Basic, so you can kind of see the shiny finish as compared to the matte finish. And then uh, on the uh, piano finish, the uh, the caps also have a shiny finish on them as well and uh, I'm just not a big fan of the shiny finish on the cap as well as the uh, fingerprint magnet uh, shiny uh, barrel as well uh, the loom can be used unposted very nicely which gives you the ability to rub your thumb in the indent if you'd like to do so uh, it has a decent amount of weight to it and it pushes to post and it posts rather deeply and securely, and the cap is light, and so it doesn't feel like it really back weights the pen whatsoever. The Loom is a, a cartridge converter pen, but unfortunately it does not come with a converter. Um, I have a standard international in here right now, and it works just fine. Uh, in regard to cartridges, uh, a standard, or a, 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 a long international will actually fit in here. Um, but when it comes to the short cartridges, they have a tendency to be a little bit loose. And so that is where this little extra piece comes in. So if you decide to put in one of the short cartridges, then what you do is you put this little extra piece, this little extra piece right here in the barrel, and between the two of them, it takes up the size of the barrel and the, you're not, you don't risk this short cartridge popping out at all and then making a mess within the barrel of your pen. So the Faber-Castell Loom, I'm a big fan of this pen. In my opinion, it's one of the very best pens that you could buy for $40. The metal body gives it a decent amount of weight without being too heavy. Uh, I like the looks of the oversized cap and the nib is amazing. Uh, for someone looking to take a step up from something like the Pilot Metropolitan or a Lamy Safari or any of the Gin House, uh, the Loom, in my opinion, is an excellent choice. So here we go with some measurements, then I'll do some size comparisons and then provide a right example. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Faber-Castell Loom. Uh, we have a Pilot Metropolitan. We have a Lamy All-Star. And then we have a, a, a Jin Hao X750. So these are all ones in the uh, relative price range that, uh, that we're talking about here. And then also something a little bit out of the price range here is a, a Mont Blanc 149 uh, as well as a, a, a Lamy 2000 so you can see how they compare. So in regard to a writing sample we have the Faber Castell Loom and this is a medium steel nib and the ink is Noodler's 54th Massachusetts the uh, 54th Massachusetts is a real nice blue black with uh, I think it almost has a kind of a tinge of a green in it as well some com comparable blue blacks we have the bung box 4b uh, and the uh, the sailor sailor gentle blue black uh, like I said this one almost seems like it has a little bit more green in it than the others
but I like this ink very much. Here's the bottle. Uh, what I learned was the, the 54th Massachusetts Infantry was the first black regiment called into armed service during the American Civil War. And the, uh, the story of the 54th was most prominently told in the movie Glory. And uh, here's a nice picture of uh, the soldiers engaging in battle. Plus, I like the, uh, the Noodler's glass bottles. I'm glad to hear that they've actually been able to go back to the glass bottles after they've been in the plastic bottles for a little while. So here we go with uh, another writing sample. The nib is very smooth here, and it has a, like I mentioned in the review, a very distinct feedback that I, I like very much. Uh, it just has a, a real unique feed uh, feedback that, uh, that that is very, very cool. Uh, this is a rather generous medium nib, so you're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. I mean, starting with no pressure whatsoever, you could get a little bit out of here, but uh, some of the, the flex, more flex writing is not what this nib is necessarily meant for. Uh, it is rather wet. Now some of that can be properties of the ink, but it is a little bit on the wet side. And in regard to reverse writing, uh, it is very scratchy, but it lays down probably more ink than I've seen on any reverse writing uh, on any other review that I've done. It lays down a lot of ink. And in regard to fast writing, some initials, no problem whatsoever. The ink flow has never been an issue with this nib at all. So the Faber-Castell Loam is a, a very solid pen and it has some uh, unique features and the medium nib writes beautifully. Uh, it's reasonably priced for the value you receive. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave a comment here in the video. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I typically put out a new review once a week. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.